2007, uh, to be very specific, May 1st, 2007, my life changed forever. My daughter was born. And when I became a dad of this uh, beautiful little girl, my whole perspective of life changed completely. She became the center of my world. And as a dad, all I wanted for her was to have access to the best opportunities in life so that she could grow strong, independent, confident. She could pursue her happiness. I'm an immigrant and I'm an educator. And I believe that education is a catalyst for economic and social mobility. To me, education is a path to the American dream. So I wanted my daughter to get a good education so that she could pursue a good career in her future. Growing up, she loved school. She loved books. And when she learned how to write, she loved to do that. But math? Math was a struggle. She was very smart, curious, inquisitive. She loved learning. But she grew up hating that. And my wife and I didn't know why. I remember the evenings trying to do math homework, and sometimes it would be so stressful that out of compassion, I would say things like, guys, you know what? Math is maybe just not her thing. But I didn't realize that with that comment or that type of comment, I was minimizing her potential completely. And I also didn't realize that I could have affected the opportunities that she could access in her future. But in fifth grade, things started to take a turn. We noticed that math homework wasn't so much of a struggle anymore. And she seemed to enjoy math. She had a teacher who literally changed her life. It was her math teacher. The teacher constantly said to her, wow, you're so good at this. With that, the teacher gave her confidence also come to find out the teacher was making math class purposeful. She was connecting math concepts that she was teaching in class with real life, the real world. So math became meaningful. And also, this teacher was breaking down math concepts from simple to complex so that students could learn and at the time that they're learning, experience success. It was so interesting to see my daughter's relationship with math change completely. She became confident and started to appreciate math. A few years later, after seeing my daughter's experience, I was developing STEM programs at work thanks to a government grant that we were awarded. And one of the requirements of that grant was to recruit non-traditional students. And in the STEM world, it happened to be girls. This is when I learned more about the underrepresentation of women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematic jobs. And the more I learned, the more I realized that the underrepresentation of women in STEM was an economic and a social issue. So why should we care? Because millions of girls, like my daughter, will go into the labor force. Since the 1940s, women have become a, a pillar of the American labor force. They have supported society, shaping the economy, and driving innovation. Today, over 75 million women are working in the economy, representing 48% of the total uh, American labor force, yet they earn less than men because women are more likely to work in lower paying jobs. We should care because the globalization of the American economy has increased the need for workers that uh, are going to be needed in high demand careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematic fields. Yet today, women only represent about 25% of STEM workers. And we should care 
because STEM has the highest labor market growth. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, by the year 2032, STEM jobs will grow about 11%, while all other jobs will experience a growth of only 2.3%. In addition, STEM has the highest earning potential in the economy with an annual wage average of about $100,000, while the average for non-STEM jobs is about $46,000. The underrepresentation of women in STEM is an economic issue, but we should also care because it is a social issue. Not having the perspective of women in the field is a loss for society as a whole. Imagine a world without the groundbreaking innovation that surrounds us today developed by women. <laughs> Stephanie Wallach, a chemist, she discovered Kevlar, the strong fiber that bulletproof vests are made out of. Katherine Johnson, a space scientist and mathematician, she played a key role in calculating the space travel trajectory for Alan Sheffer, who was the first American in space. Rosalind Franklin, a chemist, she revealed the structure of DNA. And Lydia Villa Kamarov, a molecular biologist, she discovered that bacteria could be engineered to produce human insulin. There are countless other pivotal technologies discovered or invented by women driving progress and also changing the lives of people. Their contributions are not just significant, they are indispensable to society. Girls across the country in our schools today, like my daughter, will enter the labor force, yet many of them uh, may be hesitant to pursue a career in STEM. There are many reasons why women don't pursue uh, STEM as a field for the professional trajectory, but some defy the odds. So as a dad, and as an educator, I wanted to understand what influences women to pursue careers in STEM. So I conducted a research study. I studied the experiences of women who are STEM professionals, and I found that the factors that influence them to choose STEM are a variety of interconnected common experiences. They had supportive families who encouraged them to be resilient, to never give up, work hard, and to value education. They had impactful teachers who taught math with purpose, emphasized learning over grading, and helped them uh, believe in themselves, just like my daughter's teacher did. They also experienced career exploration opportunities and had access to STEM role models where they could see what STEM was all about. After learning this, I wonder what if these common experiences could be replicated so maybe more girls could be confident to pursue a career in STEM in their future if they want to. And I believe we can. We can impact the next generation of women in STEM when families support their daughters in stealing the value of education in them and supporting them to be resilient and confident by encouraging them to believe in themselves and to try their best and never give up. Schools, schools play a major role in this. They need to work to foster appreciation for math by supporting teachers to teach math with purpose, to connect math concepts to real life and also to teach math from simple to complex to help students experience success and develop confidence. Also, schools need to work to provide access to career exploration opportunities and access to STEM role models so that kids can see the real world impact of STEM. In the workplace, industry, Please continue working on creating a respectful and professional environments 
with opportunities for women to experience and achieve professional and personal fulfillment. The math teacher my daughter had in fifth grade, she gave my daughter opportunity to choose, where now she has chosen to pursue a career in STEM. And as a dad and as an educator, I believe we should care. We should care about this issue and we can have a positive impact. Not caring closes the doors for future generations of women to access opportunities in the labor force. When I asked various women uh, in STEM, why are so many women not choosing STEM? One of them said without hesitation, people would make different choices if they had the opportunity to make different choices. With simple actions, we can create positive experiences for girls to be prepared and perhaps make choices about their personal and professional trajectories that may include STEM. We can help open access to STEM careers for talented women and bring their perspective to elevate the field with their perspective and with that, the evolution of society. <laughs> Caring about the underrepresentation of women in STEM and taking action, we can impact young women to go from this quote to become people who can make different choices because they have the opportunity to make different choices. Thank you.